What's up, Beast? Bob here from BrotherhoodBeast.com, ChristopherBobRoberts.com, and today I'm going to tell you how to spot a sucker punch. Now, for those who don't know, a sucker punch is a completely unexpected attack. A guy might want to mug you, and he just like walks up, starts talking to you normally, distracts you a little bit, boom, lands a punch, you're unconscious before you hit the ground, and while you're laying there unconscious, he takes your wallet and runs. Or maybe you're arguing with a guy, a guy's being aggressive towards you, and you're trying to talk your way out of it, you're trying to reason with him, you're trying to de-escalate, boom, punch comes out of nowhere. Because you don't know you're in a fight, you don't see the punch coming, you don't expect the punch to come, it usually lands. And it doesn't just usually land, it usually lands clean. As in, you don't have a chance to like brace yourself or even block it a little bit or roll with it. It hits flush, you're completely unexpecting, so it usually knocks you out. And that is very dangerous because you can imagine if your body goes completely limp, like you're knocked out before you hit the ground, that means your head is falling from however tall you are, five feet, six feet, directly onto a concrete floor or a street. A lot of times the damage that a person's brain gets from hitting the floor after they were knocked out is actually worse than the damage from the punch that knocks them out in the first place. So you need to know how to spot a sucker punch. And my number one tip for spotting a sucker punch is what I call unilateral movement. Now a sucker punch is usually like some kind of like a hooking or haymaker type punch, okay? So if a person stands just facing you and punches like this, there's not a lot of force that's going to be involved, okay? It's what a boxer calls an arm punch. We know that to throw a punch, you need to use your legs, your hips, your waist, your shoulders, and then your arm, okay? So for a person to really forcibly punch, they need to have their punching side somehow like further back or further down. So number one, and probably the best known tip that you're gonna be punched is what a lot of people call like the shoulder drop or the shoulder dip, okay? I don't move my feet, I don't move my hips, I just kinda like drop one arm, okay? Which means, like I said, I dip with my shoulder and then I can use this to punch. Now I got a little bit of waist, I got a little bit of my back leg, okay? Even though I didn't move my actual feet, it just gives me more power than this, okay? So if you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden his shoulder dips or it looks maybe like the other shoulder goes up, it's really this shoulder dipping, but it might look like the shoulder goes up, this side is where the punch is gonna come from. Another form of unilateral movement is when a person puts one leg ahead of the other. Now they're not gonna be going ahead and getting into like a karate stance, okay, and jump into it because that wouldn't be a sucker punch. That would be someone starting a street fight, like signaling their intentions or telegraphing is what you know a boxer or a kickbox would call it. But what they might do is they might do something like they're talking to you and all of a sudden they're like, oh man, like you're being passive, I'm being aggressive, okay? Now I'm acting like, oh my God, I'm exasperated. Like, oh my God, like I can't believe this guy, right? What I'm really doing is I'm actually hiding the fact that I'm coming in with a punch, okay? So I'm talking like, man, I'm pretending that I'm just like, man, I can't believe this guy. Man, boom. Once again, the side that moves back and down is the side that the punch is gonna come from. Now, a third and very dangerous way that unilateral movement can tip off a sucker punch is when a person actually steps forward. So once again, I'm standing straight and I want to get into like a fighting stance, right? So I go ahead and I push you with only one side. Now, first of all, I'm pushing you like this. You're not expecting it, so you're gonna be like off balance. You're not exactly gonna be able to defend yourself. You're gonna be like surprised. You're not gonna be thinking about getting attacked. You're trying to get your balance. So if I go like this, not only do I have you off balance and distracted and you can't move because your feet aren't properly planted on the ground, but now I have my left arm back so I can throw a really hard punch. Or more dangerous than that is when somebody pushes and grabs. So I go ahead and I push, grab you by your shirt, grab you by your jacket, 
Now, not only am I punching forward from behind, which means I have more power, but I'm also pulling you in. My fist is moving forward, away from me. Your face, your chin is moving towards me, and it's much more powerful. A lot of people call this a hockey punch because when you're on the ice playing hockey, on skates, if you punch a guy, he's gonna move away. So what people will do is they'll grab with one hand or they'll just punch with the other hand. Same thing here. <clears throat> I push you, grab you, punch you, and if I don't knock you out, I just continue punching you. And once again, you did not see the first punch coming because you didn't see this video. Like I said, you're probably gonna get knocked out, but you're certainly going to be like completely distracted by the fact that you got punched so even if it doesn't knock you out, you're not gonna be in the right state of mind to defend yourself. And after two, three, four, five times you get punched, you're gonna be going down. Do not under any circumstances underestimate the danger of being sucker punched. They usually land, they usually land flush, which means they usually knock you out. And it's not just you, and it's not just your wallet. If you get knocked out by a sucker punch, Who's gonna be there to protect your wife, your kids, your family, your mother, your father, your dog, your cat, your family, your neighbor? You need to always be aware of your surroundings. You need to always be aware of who you're talking to, their body language, what they're trying to express, and you need to spot these cues far in advance so you never get caught off guard. Guys, if you found this useful, go to brotherhoodofbeast.com, check out my group coaching program. I don't just cover nutrition and working out and mindset. I also cover what I call self-defense street fighting and street fighting's mental edge. Street fighting's mental edge covers situational awareness, just like we discussed here. And in addition to what I already have created, back when I was working as a bouncer and seeing fights all the time, I'm adding little lessons similar to this, but in more detail to cover very practical, specific aspects of, in this case, situational awareness. Because, like I said, if you don't see an attack coming, you're never going to be able to defend yourself, your family, your community. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. If you have any questions or anything you want me to cover in the future, just comment below. And aside from that, I'll talk to you guys again in the next video.